Hello, I'm Dr. Ian Kenvin from the Avexia Foundation, and this is the latest of our virtual life belts for turbulent times. Today, we're going to be thinking about resilience, and particularly as resilience as a learned behavior. Please, it's very important that you read our disclaimer statement and understand what we're saying there. It will also be quite helpful to you if you have a notebook and pencil or paper to hand uh, because there are a couple of interactive exercises which we'd like you to do as we progress uh, through this film. So, our objectives today are quite simple. By the end of the session, we will have thought about the natural characteristics of resilience and more importantly, realized that those lot of resilience is about learned behavior. We'll unpack that a little bit more and consider what makes the, what we might call the bouncers and the breakers, those people that can bounce back from challenge and those people who appear to break. We will also have looked at some uh, strategies for resilience in, in a variety of settings, maybe learning from how resilience manifests itself in different settings and give us things that we can take uh, and use for ourselves. We will also be um, looking at what are the broad characteristics of resilient people, because these they, there are common themes there. Uh, you will have talked about uh, your personal fit. So you will be devising your own personal fit in terms of thinking about your resilience. And by the end, we will have resolved uh, some actions. So without any further ado, let's move on and talk a little bit about um, bouncers and breakers. It's a way I'm suggesting that we, we can have sometimes two apparently very similar people. Um, but when faced with the same challenge, one person appears to be able to bounce back from that, that stress, that challenge, that adversity, while another person falls apart. You could say they break. And the question really is about, well, why should that be? It's not because people are innately different. Uh, it's not because some one person is born with much more resilience than another. No, 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 no. Resilience is not innate. It's not something you're born with. It's actually broadly a learned behavior. So I need to unpack that a little bit and think about how resilience manifests itself in life, in business or in sport. Um, almost invariably, um, what we find is that definitely uh, in, in life we have, we have moments when we're a little bit knocked back and it's worth thinking about, well, how do, you, how do you come back from that? How do you cope with those challenges? Challenges will come in a whole variety of guises. Uh, they might be educational, they might be familial, they might be more broadly social, but how do you cope with those? In business, in particular, when we begin to talk to or see people who are seen as being successful in business, almost invariably they have had a series of failures until they achieve success. What characterizes, particularly in business, is that people can learn from those mistakes, think about what adaptations they need to do, and then they come back. Most definitely in the world of sport, almost invariably, the most successful sports people have at some point faced defeat. Um, you could probably think of, of a, a number of examples where you, know, you get a team that just refuses to lie down, a team that refuses to give up. The New Zealand All Blacks rugby side would be a very good example. I mean, they do not stop playing until the final whistle goes. They will keep trying to win until the final whistle goes, which means that a team that is facing somebody like that have to be absolutely at their very, very best in order to beat such a resilient side. So it does rather put into context the triumph of the England rugby union side over the All Blacks in the recent World Cup. 
is a perfect example of probably, probably one of the best games of rugby that has possibly ever been. The two sides played brilliantly because they were both extremely resilient. Likewise, you know, if you are an athlete and you don't perform as well as you would hope in a, in a race or an event, then what a good coach will do is sit down with you and say, OK, why was that like that? What went wrong? What can we change? What can we improve? The whole thing about resilience is that you will face challenge, you will face disappointment, you will face defeat, but rather than let it bring you down, you regroup, you reflect, and ultimately you will return stronger. So, here's the first pause moment. What I'd like you to do in a moment is to pause this film uh, and write yourself a few notes. What I'd like you to think about is, Think of a time when you were challenged. Think of a time when you had to exhibit some resilience. Think of a time where you had to think, OK, how am I going to cope with this? What do I need to do? I'd like you to, having thought about that time, make yourself a few notes. What were your physical feelings? How did you physically feel at that point? What was your state of mind? And did that state of mind change? And maybe also reflect on, well, what was the outcome from that? Because, you know, did you reflect on that challenge? You know, what, um, what resolutions did you make when you were facing that challenge? OK, so you think about that and when you're ready, press play. Excellent. I hope you found that interesting. Now, what I'd like you to do now is to think about how we capture this idea of, of resilience. And one of the key things with resilience is that if you can't change something, you can change the way you think about it. So in this context, you know, descriptions like tough or hard are not a particularly good image because tough and hard are, are, are rigid. They're, they don't have flexibility. And eventually things that are inflexible and rigid will break. And sometimes they break catastrophically. So in terms of thinking about your own resilience, it's far better to think about yourself as somebody who is fluid who is flexible, who is flowing, flowing like water is a good image. Water flows around things, it wears things down, but it never stops. Water is immensely powerful, but it never stops. And that's actually what resilience is all about, is being flexible, changing the way you think about things, and eventually you will wear down that which was immovable, that which was apparently solid. OK, the thing about resilience is there isn't a single magic formula. There isn't a single prescription that we can give you. What you need to do is to find your fit. What you have to do is to tailor your abilities, your characteristics into your own personal version of resilience. Which is not to say that it is completely uh, individualised. Um, I think there are some broad characteristics which we do seem to find amongst resilient individuals. <clears throat> and what we're going to do now is to work through a few of those. Generally, resilient people seem to have boundaries. They realise that even if they are, are suffering, that suffering is temporary. And the suffering does not define you because it will eventually change. People who are resilient find good company. Um, and what we mean by that is that resilient people seem to find others uh, who are supportive. People who will listen actively. 
uh, who will um, <clears throat> who will give advice appropriately, but equally will give you space. What you tend to find with the, the good company is that they will be a calming rather than frustrating uh, source of support for you. Another characteristic that we tend to find with people who are uh, resilient is that they have good self-awareness. And, and what we mean by that is that um, knowing what you need and also more importantly, knowing what you do not need. So um, you also, in terms of that self-awareness, know when you need to reach out for help. And that is quite critical and quite important. A resilient person is also sensitive to the body's cues. You know, your body tends to start giving you messages quite early on if you but listen to them. So we've listed a couple here, but things like mood. You know, are you tuning into your moods? Sleep. We've talked about previously and we'll, we'll keep talking about it. Sleep is really important. Um, so, you know, how is your sleep? Is it disturbed or is it peaceful? Appetite, are you eating too little or too much? How does your energy level feel? Are you alternating between having hyper amounts of energy and then crashing? Or are you fairly steady? Yes, realizing there are times when you'll be a little bit weary, but other times you've got plenty of energy to do the things that you want to do. The other thing that people who are resilient seem to be able to do is to ac accept things. Now that's not about giving in. Somebody who is accepting will accept that stress or pain, it's part of life. It's not about giving in, but it's about learning to experience the full range of emotions and knowing that better times will come. That's very important. Yes, things are bad at the moment, but almost invariably, they will get better. So, let's think about some actions. So, in terms of your resilience, one of the most important things you can do is to do nothing. Find time to be silent and still. Allow yourself to just be. And that sometimes we will fill our lives with actions which actually are simply distraction and displacement behavior. What you should seek to do is to be present without judgment and without avoidance. It's not about giving up or giving in, it's simply finding a still, quiet space. Another action that is very important is that it's okay not to have all the answers. One of the challenges can be, particularly when we're facing a complex um, set of challenges, and we are certainly are at the moment, um, the brain can become too busy. Um, and what can happen is that that very busy brain creates a, a sense of white noise going on in your head, and it can actually block the naturally arising answers. So it's okay not to have it all figured out straight away. That's fine, that's progress in its own way. The other, another really important action, as we say here, is the practice of self-care. Now, self-care, it might be physical, uh, it might be mental, it might be spiritual, but it's about finding those good habits that support you. The good habits which are your good positive coping mechanisms. Find the things that recharge your batteries. What are the things you do that make you feel better, that re renew your energy? 
And what are the things which, which refill your cup of joy or happiness? Let's think more about these actions. One of the things that is really important in terms of resilience is um, enlisting your team. Who do you talk to? Who listens well, but who is also honest to you? You don't want somebody who will always agree with you, nor always take the alternative view, but somebody who is honest. Uh, they'll let you be yourself, but they will also witness who you are and what you're saying and reflect that back to you. Very important in terms of um, understanding that sometimes what you might interpret as criticism could simply be a good friend actually reflecting back at you maybe things that you hadn't otherwise thought about. The other action which is quite important is to consider other possibilities. If you're looking at this particular thing or this particular situation, could you look at it differently? Could you change the perspective? Could you change the way in which the light is falling upon that situation? Is there another way to see it? Also, can you look at that which is permanent and that which might change? Obviously, if something is permanent, you're not going to be able to change it. But there will be a number of other things which will not be permanent, which possibly you could change. So identify that which cannot be changed, identify that which could be changed. Yeah. The other thing that's really important in this situation is, are you reacting to this event, this situation, or are you being affected by past events, by past experiences? Try to be in the present. Look at this as it is now not necessarily uh, something which is uh, affecting you from the past. The other really important action I've mentioned here is getting outside your head. Please note that's get outside your head, not get off your head. Um, one of the challenges that you can find is that your brain can start to whirl around and it creates this kind of circular set of thinking and if you spin around in circles enough it begins to make you dizzy. Um, you begin to lose your sense of balance, you lose, lose your sense of stability because you've been dizzied by all the thoughts that are going around in your head. So one of the things which we suggest can work quite well there is to capture some of those dizzying thoughts. And one of the ways in which you capture those dizzying thoughts might be to write them down. Maybe write yourself a note, produce a journal. Uh, you might want to write them in a blog. You might want to produce them as a vlog. But what you're looking at doing is doing what we call breaking the rumination, ruminative thinking, going around in a loop, going around in a loop. Find ways in which you can break that rumination. And generally, uh, what we'd say is there is try and find what we might broadly call healthy distractions uh, to allow you to, to process without constantly chewing away at it. OK, so we're at the next pause moment. What I'd like you to do is to pause this film and begin to make some notes for yourself. Who would you have in your team? Who would be the person or persons that you would like to be able to use to help you in your, stri in your, in your striving to be more resilient? Who is it? Who, is, who were those people? Yeah, you know, write the names down, capture them. Um, can you think about the things that recharge your batteries? the things that are particular to you. So what recharges your batteries? And what is it that refills your cup of joy? What is it that refills your cup of happiness? What you should do then is to list that as a go-to list of actions. And really quite important within this, recognizing that a silent pause is also an action. So what we're looking for here is a set of is a list. 
You might want to break them down into being the physical, the emotional or the spiritual, whatever headings you want. But what I'd like you to have by the end of this particular uh, section is ways in which you can develop strategies that allow you to get outside of your head and outside of that ruminative thinking. And I'll see you on the other side when you press play. Moving towards the conclusion here, what we have done through this talk is to thought about the natural characteristics and learned behaviours of resilience. We've spent a little bit, bit of time thinking about the bouncers and the breakers, and you might want to reflect as which category do you put yourself in, and which category do you want to, have you seen others behaving within. We've looked at some examples of resilience, and we thought about a variety of settings where resilience is, is made real. We have thought about the characteristics of resilient people. And within that, within that list of characteristics, what you've been invited to do is to think about, well, what is your personal fit? What is your, if you like, formula for, re for resilience? And this final, um, the final outcome is to resolve some key actions. So let's have a look at them. What we suggest you do is to reflect. Uh, think about the interactive sections within this film. What are the things that have resonated with you? What are the things which have you've gone, yes, I can see, or no, I haven't thought about that before. It's a really good idea if you can get those things noted in your, in your journal or in your notebook. Please also, if there are things that you would like clarified, make a note of what those things are. And again, you can use your journal for that. And we will be able to discuss that uh, within the webinar, which follows this by a few days, this, this talk by a few days. And then it's also always a good idea to capture your resolutions. Um, so, you know, write down your resolutions or find another way of embodying those resolutions. Now, there might be a whole variety of different ways you choose to do that, but what is undoubtedly the case is embodying them makes them more powerful. You might want to write a poem. You might want to create a piece of art. You might want to, there's a whole variety of things you can do, but things which capture your resolutions. Now, the other thing which is really important is that in thinking about challenging situations, sometimes we can feel um, quite, quite negatively affected. So one of the things which uh, we have in this, um, in this resource is five, our five pages of further sets of information about helplines and sources of information that you might wish to reach out to. I have been Dr. Ian Kenvin and this has been a virtual life belt considering the nature of resilience. Thank you.